Hi, my name is Neil Blevins, and this is a tutorial about painting a robot design. So the idea behind this tutorial is that you've already got the design of your robot pretty much worked out, and now you just want to uh, paint it in a slightly more realistic manner. So this is going to go through the technique that I use in order to uh, do just that. So a number of months ago, I went ahead and I did a bunch of these really, really low-res, uh, simple designs of a sort of walker robot. And the idea here wasn't to make a pretty uh, painting or even have good perspective. It was more just about, okay, what's the, the general design of these robots? And after I made a whole bunch of them, I put them online, and I had people vote on what their favorites were. And then I took the three winning votes, and I did more detailed paintings of them, which you can see over here. So uh, for this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show my process for going from the very simple design here into something that looks a little bit more finished. And the basic way of doing it involves taking me the original sketch, doing a really s simple 3D uh, block out of the main shapes, and then painting over top in Photoshop. So rather than showing you the entire process and just talking over it, um, the entire process of making one of these guys was uh, about three hours. I decided instead to take little clips of some of the more interesting parts. Um, I will talk over those so you can see as I'm uh, painting it how I go about doing various bits and pieces. And then at the end I'm going to come in and I'm going to show you the, uh, all the layers in the final Photoshop file. And in uh, this video, I'm going to show you the one in the middle. The one in the middle is going to be the one that I'm going to do. But of course, the same process was used to make the two on uh, each side. So let's uh, get going. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and I'm starting off with the uh, original sketch that you saw. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create separate layers for each of the separate pieces. And this is just a management uh, technique I have to make it simpler to do the individual parts. So um, it also allows me to sort of focus on one part at a time. So now I'm going to go into uh, 3D Studio. Although you can use, of course, any um, piece of 3D software because what we're doing in here is really not that strenuous. It's not going to be uh, a super detailed model. It's just going to be enough that it'll make it easier to, uh, to paint over. So here I'm adjusting the lighting until I find a good uh, lighting direction for the, uh, the piece. And now I'm going to bring in the rough sketch as a background image so that I have something to model on top of. So you can see here, I um, already uh, made the model ahead of time, and it's only made up of simple boxes, simple shapes, and now I'm going to line it up with the original rough painting so that it's a, a approximately the same uh, position and uh, direction. Here I'm just going to move the pivot of the big tube. And I'm going to do a little bit of adjusting again to make sure that it's uh, looking pretty close to the, uh, the background image. Now I'm going to go ahead and render. Rendering with V-Ray, but again it really doesn't matter because all I'm doing is trying to get the basic proportion and uh, a little bit of light direction and the uh, uh, basic perspective. So now I'm going in and doing just a few little tweaks based on the original image underneath to make sure that the overall shapes and design are pretty close.
Okay, so now re-rendering with the better proportions, and I think this works a little bit better based on the, uh, the the original sketch that I did. And of course, if there's any big things you want to change, this is the the place to change them. You don't have to. The only reason I was making it as close to the sketch as possible is because I really, really like the proportions of the sketch. But you can make changes in the in the 3D portion if it looks better than the original sketch. Adding a little bit of extra geometry. There we go. Okay, so now I bring in the 3D model as a base layer that I'm going to start painting on top of. So I drop it into the the composite that I had before, which was, remember, I broke out all the different pieces of the sketch into different parts. And now I'm going to go about starting to paint over top of this. So I can do the face and I keep that over there as reference. create a new layer and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly paint over top of the 3D underneath so that I have a completely separate head that doesn't have all the other parts connected to it. And um, for brushes here uh, you'll see that the brush I'm using is a very very simple brush. It is just a triangular brush that is got almost no texture to it, just a little tiny bit. So. Nothing special about the brush. You can use any with the round brush, whatever you want. Okay, so now I have the separate headpiece, and I'm going to start going in and adding some details. So first of all, let's do the eyes. You'll see frequently what I do is I use the marquee tool to select an area and then I paint that area in. I just find it easier to paint it in than it is to use the um, use the fill tool. Now what I'm doing here is I'm adding um, with the paintbrush a uh, little indents. Almost every surface isn't perfectly straight. Uh, um, if you have an edge, that edge is usually a little bit rounded, so I'm adding in the rounded edges here. And the way you do this is by uh, painting in darker light, depending on the lighting direction and what edge you're, you're trying to paint in. I did a tutorial, in fact, um, it's free on my website, neilblevins.com, if you want to check it, uh, discussing how to paint these sorts of bumps and uh, divots with uh, light and dark. So now I'm going in and uh, continuing to add a little bit of paint, add uh, just a little bit of painted shading in here just to avoid that super, super 3D look, make it, I mean, it's going to be, a, it's a hard surface model, so it's going to already look uh, reasonably, reasonably uh, um, detailed and straight and perfect, so I want to muck it up a little bit by adding a little bit of uh, hand-painted shading in there. And again, using the same triangle brush with uh, just a little bit of texture in there. So you see here what I have is that I have a huge, huge repository of photographs I've taken of uh, bits of construction equipment and that kind of thing. And what I use that for is adding the little details. So you can see there, um, that's some sort of piece from some big construction equipment. And I selected it off the, 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 uh, the sheet and I paste it in and I remove the color and I used the distort tool um, which is in Photoshop under edit in order to get it into proper perspective and now I've just added a little tiny bit of detail there so duplicate it put it over on the other side too since most things are um, reasonably symmetrical on uh, these sorts of these sorts of robots
adding a few little little hole shapes. Again, notice in order to make it look 3D, I paint it dark because it's going in, and then on the bottom I paint a little bit of white, which is the edge that's reflecting the light that's coming up from uh, the top and, and going down. Trying to break up the uh, little sort of eye shape there a little bit. Now this is a grunge texture that um, I took, again, it was a photo for something and then I made it, uh, I made it uh, black and white. Spending a moment just to name some layers. Right there, I was just getting rid of a little hole that was in the back of the uh, back of the the painting. So here, I just took that grunge texture and I pasted it on top with a clipping mask so that it only appears on top of the robot and not on top of the background, and then set it to multiply. And now I'm going in and just removing a few little bits of that dirt that um, I don't like leaving the parts that I do, and this is a great way to scuff up your, your robot. Now this part here, this is a, one of those other robots I showed you, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal. So I made these little antenna for that robot, and since I don't need to necessarily paint a new antenna, I went to my old uh, robot and then just stole the antenna from there and are now adjusting them and going to reuse them. And this is something I do a lot. Anytime I do a painting, I usually keep little chunks of the other paintings and keep them around and then use them in new paintings and that's it's basically 2d kit bashing the idea that you don't want to have to repaint everything from scratch so instead you keep the pieces that are useful or could be useful in other things um, then you drop them in and then maybe paint over top of them again to make them a little bit different or change their lighting to integrate them into your current uh, current piece So next I'm going to add a little bit of more, a little more grunge. In this case it's going to be a uh, drip. And this drip was a drip that um, again was a photograph that I took of a drip on a wall and then grayscaled it and now I'm going to use it in this painting. And drips frequently happen when there are little joins. So if there's a join like say for example this little um, this, this little um, you know cylindrical thing, what I will then do is I'll put a drip directly under it and it'll look as though so there's like oil or something leaking out of that to that connection and then dripping down. Here is another photo that I took. I'm going to invert that so it's black instead of white. Make it smaller with the transform tool and then Rotate it a little bit to get it into perspective. Paint away a little bit I didn't like. And again, that's another spot. Maybe there's a little bit of oil dripping out of the, uh, the sort of eye area. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the uh, the head overall. So now I'm going to show you a slightly different thing. The head, of course, is a very, it's a basically a box. So it is a little bit more simple uh, in order to get the, the, the shapes on this. So I'm going to show you a rounded surface as well, which is why I'm also showing you this, um, showing you the, uh, the, the gun on the side, the, uh, the rocket launcher sort of thing. So again, start off by just painting in flat shapes. Get rid of all the rest of the stuff because I don't need it. Here you go. Now 
Now in order to get it to look round, what I'll do is I'll paint black on one side, white on the other side, and then bring that down to a really low opacity. And then that gives it the impression that it is three-dimensional because one area is, is dark, one area is light, and there's a nice gradient in between the two. So the next thing I'm gonna do is it's time for me to start thinking about color. And I'm bringing up all these images that I got from the internet of various sort of tanks and uh, uh, military vehicles. And I'm trying to decide what color to make this, uh, this character. So I'm going in, I start off with uh, the reference and then I adjust it a little bit with hue and saturation just to see if there is a uh, slightly better color something that's a little bit more appropriate for what I'm trying to create. This is supposed to be some sort of military uh, robot, so I wanted it to have sort of military type colors. So once I'm happy with uh, what I did to the reference photo, I now drop a hue saturation and set it to clipping so it's only changing the color of the uh, robot itself and not the background set it to colorize, and then I adjust the colors here until I've matched the uh, reference pretty closely. Okay, so here it is, jumped ahead a little bit. All the uh, techniques I showed you before are exactly the same. Now I'm gonna show you doing the leg. And so um, I found this great um, uh, digger near my house one day, and I took a whole lot of photos of it. And so what I did was I took the photo, which uh, was of the shovel part, but it looked a little bit like it could be a really cool leg. And I pasted it in, and now I'm using the distort tool to distort it into perspective. And it's not going to be perfect perspective, uh, but again, um, this is supposed to be, while more detailed than my rough sketch, this is still a little bit rough, and it's a concept sketch, so it doesn't have to be in perfect perspective to get the idea across of what it's supposed to look like. So I take it and uh, adjust the color a little bit, and there I am uh, applying that uh, hue saturation that I used for the, uh, the rest of the surface. And I'm erasing, uh, using the mask on the hue saturation to remove just a little bit of uh, the, the color to reveal the, the original color under, underneath because I don't want the thing to be totally 100%. Like if you have a hue saturation over absolutely everything, it can tend to look a little bit colorized because that's what you're doing. But really things do have more color variety in there. So you don't want to have everything be exactly the same color all over the place. And so this is uh, one of the techniques I use to do that. And I'm painting out a few details that um, I don't think I'll need. Uh, again, using that um, real simple small triangular brush. So these pieces, as you can see, it's a big combination of really simple 3D and then uh, a bunch of hand painting with the marquee tool, then a bunch of details that you add by taking um, photographs and distorting them and then painting over top of those, depending on what you need. One thing I always ran into when I was uh, a kid was the, the whole blank canvas problem. And that is, if you have nothing on the canvas, it feels like a, a horrible, daunting task to go in and, and get something on there. And so the thing I like about taking photographs and dropping them in is even if at the end of the day, the photograph is 100% covered with hand paint, it gives me something to start with. And that makes me feel a lot better when I'm going in and doing, uh, doing the painting. Here I'm adding a little bit of uh, variety to the edge, so the edge isn't absolutely perfect straight going all the way up. So I added a little uh, a cutaway part. Trying to simplify a few of the, uh, the details. Decided that those look a little bit like toes, so I uh, got rid of the stuff below it 
and I'm now going in and adding them and making them look a little more toe-like. Sometimes when you add these details to your uh, your mech, they actually suggest other ideas, like for example the, the idea of the toes. And If I hadn't used that photo, I would probably not have thought of adding these little toes, but since I dropped the photo in, uh, then all of a sudden I'm staring at it and I go, hey, you know, those look like toes. And so that can lead to fun, fun little happy accident ideas. And there we go. Okay, so now we're back. Um, this is now live. It's no longer watching me paint the thing and then uh, me doing the voiceover over top. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through a few more pieces of this um, in Photoshop, showing you all the different layers and what the different layers do. Uh, just help solidify some of the ideas that you saw in the uh, last video as I painted it live. So um, let's go, let's take this, which you saw at least the beginning part of me uh, paint, and let me show you a few more details on it. So this one is the, where is it? Arm two, okay. So let's go down to the bottom here. Let me just adjust. Here we go. Okay, so you might remember uh, this part that you saw before, which was the, I painted out the, the simple shapes and then I painted over the black and the white and set it to a low value to give it some dimension. And then this is a photograph that uh, I took from a piece of uh, stock image. Um, I forget who it was who did this, but they went, uh, somebody went to one of the um, big NASA museums and took a whole lot of photographs and put um, the result up on Gumroad for 10 bucks or something like that and you'd get uh, all these photos you could use for your own kit bashing and so this is uh, a piece of that and so I threw that in there because I thought I had some nice details as far as sort of the interior ribbing and all these dots around the outside so I took that photo and then uh, put it in here using the distort tool then uh, that just adds a line around the edge down there, which uh, was hand painted. Then uh, since um, that does kind of look a little bit like a missile top, but instead of keeping that in, I decided that this was going to be some sort of more like ray cannon or something like that. And so this, um, I'm pretty sure, is again another um, um, little piece from a construction vehicle that I took a photograph of. So I dropped it in there, used the distort tool to put it into perspective. Um, did a little paint, you can see that's a little hand paint right there just to um, uh, give that edge which is facing the light uh, a little bit of a highlight. Then darkened uh, the part in here a little bit and the reason I did that was um, to make it look as though this is inside because when you have something inside you'll tend to have uh, a darkened region which is the shadow from this tube on the thing that's inside. Then uh, did a little quick hand paint here just to uh, muck this up a little bit so it didn't look so perfect. Added another uh, another line and another one. So these are just creases in here to give it a little more detail. Uh, this is one of those uh, grunge layers. Uh, again, um, it's really funny. I'll go to places like gas stations and stuff like that and I will be pumping gas in my car and then I'll look over at the surface of one of the poles or something like that and there'll just be all these horrible stains all over it and I'll quickly take my phone out and I'll take photographs of that and then bring it into Photoshop and turn it into grayscale and use it as these grunge maps which uh, you can see are set to multiply in 40 percent. I'm sure there's tons of people who see me doing this and have no clue what the heck I'm doing and think I'm crazy but uh, I don't care because it helps me make uh, cool robots. So a couple more uh, more lines and uh, just made the back um, a little bit darker. Then did a levels to make it a little bit brighter and went in and this is that hue saturation that you saw which uh, is made everything uh, nice and green, sort of the army green. Then um, to really uh, hit home the point that there's light coming from the top, I went in and just painted a little bit of extra light uh, from, um, from the top here. Then this is the part that the, um, sort of the uh, the shoulder part that uh, pops in. And this is the shoulder itself, which uh, again, if you look here, um, it's 
I forget exactly what it was, but uh, just some sort of random piece of machinery that I saw and took a photograph of and then uh, put into the, uh, the right spot. So the head, uh, you can see, um, you saw how I did it live, but a couple of extra details I added later on, um, just for fun, I put an extra little um, sort of divot area here. You can see it over there as well. Um, I, I do like kind of boxy shapes with a lot of my robots. Um, I, I've always kind of loved that ever since, you know, I, I grew up in the, the land of the Transformers, the original Transformers in the 80s, and those all had a sort of boxy look to them, and I've always kind of, kind of liked that aesthetic. But when you have something that's boxy, you don't want it to be a perfect, perfect box all over the place because it gets kind of boring. So I like doing these sort of cutouts in order to, uh, to make that work. And then you notice it's very dark here. And the reason it's dark here is because I painted over top of here a quick shadow because I knew that there was another arm that's going to go over on this, uh, this other side. So then here are the back legs using all the same techniques. Um, then the torso area. So torso, same thing. Took all those shapes that were 3D. Uh, painted over top, uh, added some grunge, added some details. Some of the details are hand painted, like I just hand painted this part. And then these are bits and pieces that I took from uh, construction equipment and whatnot. Like you can see this back here is actually exactly the same piece that's over there. Um, I just put it back there because we're not going to see it very closely, but it adds, you know, all these like little um, ridges here add some detail that you see when you just sort of see it quickly. And then these are all the different pieces. So I always tend to break up each piece into its own separate little little group here. Uh, and as I said earlier, uh, the two reasons for that. Number one is because it's easier to layer all these pieces on top of each other in the right order. And then the other one is that um, if it comes to painting an entire robot, it can sometimes be a little daunting. But if you break it down to pieces and say, OK, I'm only going to paint the leg and then only focus on the leg, it seems like a much easier process. And so you paint the leg, and then you're like, OK, now I'm going to do the next leg and the next leg. And I find that that helps uh, myself anyway to uh, uh, paint a lot quicker and not get discouraged that you have a, a really complex thing to, uh, to paint. Then here is uh, the second arm. And uh, this one is um, some sort of uh, recon. The idea would be that it would shoot with this arm. And this one it's using to uh, pinpoint what it's shooting at. And uh, this is just a photograph of a camera lens that I took and dropped in there. And then this is a wire that, again, I took a photograph of and then uh, dropped into here and then uh, painted over top of to get the, uh, the right shape on it. And then the last step up here is the graphics. And the graphics. Anytime you're doing a robot, I find it's really, really helpful to add graphics to it. Uh, not only because it adds some color, uh, you can see here that with these graphics, for example, instead of this being all the same color, um, I've added just a little bit of red here, um, a little bit of yellow here, so it helps with the color. But it also just always adds uh, authenticity when you add um, um, some actual text on the surfaces of these things. If you ever look at a piece of construction equipment or a robot, there's always tons of little text and stuff on it. So. Um, things usually come alive once you start adding the, uh, the text in. Um, and then one more thing just to point out. Um, let's see, where is that yellow band? Maybe it's always the last one you look for. So what I do here, uh, let me just disable this for a second, is I'll paint uh, the surface and then I'll do a mask here. And then if you look at this mask, what I've done is I've taken a grunge brush that I have, which just sort of has all these speckles, and I'll just quickly throw some speckles uh, on, on top of the mask. And what that does is it makes it look like paint that's kind of worn off. Um, and uh, the nice thing about doing it on a mask, of course, is I can always uh, disable the mask, uh, repaint into the mask, and I don't have to repaint this, this line here. So that's another thing that I tend to do. And sometimes I'll do the, uh, the graphics um, in sort of a, in this case, since this is a pretty fast painting, I did the graphics on top of everything, or sometimes I'll take the graphics and put them on the individual pieces inside these, uh, these individual groups here. So here's the final piece again. So just as a summary, um, start off with a real simple sketch of what the thing is going to look like. Then go into 3D and do a real simple block out, uh, which gives you uh, easy perspective and also a general lighting direction. Uh, and then also allows you to change some of the larger proportions of things. Then bring into Photoshop, uh, take each individual piece and uh, paint over top a little bit to add um, some shape to them, like for example, the beveled edges. Then add some grunge maps uh, from photos you've taken. 
um, set to multiply or whatever uh, overlay or whatever you need to do in order to get the, the grunge to look good on your, your character. Then once you've done that, uh, use hue saturation to colorize. Then add in details which are from either photographs or hand painted details if it's easier to hand paint stuff. Or um, put in the details, use the uh, distort tool to put them into place and then paint over top of them. And then once you're all done all the different pieces, add some graphics to make sure it has a little bit of color variety and voila. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, visit my website neilblevins.com if you want to see uh, more tutorials or if you want to uh, visit my YouTube channel Art of Soulburn. It has a whole bunch of videos there. And if you like those uh, videos, which are all free, uh, please consider uh, going to my Gumroad and buying one of my paid videos. They're only a couple bucks a piece, but uh, every little bit helps, and I really do appreciate the support. So thank you very much, and see you next time.